I'm Charlotte Scott. I work in the Christian Aid uh, Church Relations team, and I had the very great privilege of visiting Zimbabwe in 2017, uh, meeting Tiri, who we're going to hear from uh, today. So uh, I think it would be best if I just uh, hand over to him to introduce himself. So uh, Tiri, you're part of our team in Zimbabwe. Can you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you, who you are, um, for us all to hear? <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks a lot, uh, Charlotte, for that. Um, yes, my name is Thierry Shuro. I'm um, a team leader for a, a project that works on resilience building in Zimbabwe, Christian Aid Zimbabwe. Yes, and um, I've been in Christian Aid for almost 10 years now. And uh, yes, um, i got um, a young family, a uh, three kids. Uh, the youngest one is uh, about four months now. And yes, she's a, she's a COVID baby. Um, yes, I guess she, it's, that's going to reflect on how strong she will be. Um, yes, I think I'm happy to meet you all. Great. And uh, Tafadzwa, you also work in our, our team in Zimbabwe. Would you like to also introduce yourself uh, quickly to everyone? Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Um, my name is Tafad Wamropa. I'm the Senior Program Officer on Social and Economic Justice. Um, I am now seven months old within the Christian Aid family, but I've also have uh, 16 years working experience uh, in East and Southern Africa, both in local and international NGOs. I'm a single parent to a 13-year-old um, girl who is in Form 1 now. I'm glad to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, Thierry, I wonder if you could just let us know how things are in Zimbabwe at the moment. What's the situation like and uh, what sort of measures are you living under at the moment? Because it's such a changing situation, both here and in Zimbabwe. I think we'd all be interested to know what's, what's life like right now in May 2021. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, May uh, 2021, we're smarting from a... Uh, a uh, very good agricultural season. So most of our farmers are busy harvesting. We are then above normal rain season. Uh, I think that's a good kind of side of things. And then um, I think as you all know, COVID is um, uh, among us and uh, we're just uh, coming out of a hard lockdown. Uh, we are two months out of that hard lockdown. So there's been a slight relaxation of the um, uh, restrictions and everyone is busy running around trying to um, uh, catch up with the activities in their lives. The majority of our population lives on um, informal uh, businesses. As you might know, um, job opportunities uh, keep dwindling in the country and uh, people are busy trying to catch up. And of course, uh, with that uh, uh, hectic period, um, the risk still looms of uh, a resurgence of COVID. And uh, as a program, we are encouraging our, our beneficiaries and the, as well as our partners to remain vigilant. Um, I think, as you might already know, Zimbabwe has always been in, the, uh, in a very uh, dynamic economic, uh, political uh, environment. Yeah, so I think in a, in a summary, that's the kind of environment. Of course, we are approaching our winter, which kind of also raises the uh, risk of contracting um, things like your influenza and possibly the COVID. And so um, thinking about what you do as part of the Christian Aid team in Zimbabwe, can you tell us a little bit about the Zimbabwe Country Programme, what your current focus is, what you're working on, and particularly the kind of challenges that you're specifically trying to tackle through the Christian Aid program that you're working on. Okay, thanks a lot for the question. So the Zimbabwe program um, does um, work on a number of uh, projects, but I think I'll try to divide that into maybe a specific uh, sectors. The first one being humanitarian response. Um, we respond to mainly climate related uh, shocks and of late, we responded to the cyclone um, Idai, as well as uh, cyclone Shalane, 
where we provided um, non-food items to those households that were affected by the cyclone. We also provided shelter. We went in with uh, food as well to provide relief to those communities. Uh, beyond that, we also have a, a significant number of projects that work on um, improving our um, our beneficiaries' uh, uh, resilience, uh, in other words, improving their agricultural and non-agricultural enterprises, uh, help them access uh, uh, clean water, help them uh, uh, protect their livestock from diseases, uh, etc. We also work with young people, our youths, um, on um, vocational skills and uh, small enterprises. We also work on um, uh, governance programs where we try to support our beneficiaries in increase their voice. Uh, and one of our partners that uh, uh, help us do that is actually in the, in the, uh, on the call. Uh, I guess we have an opportunity to speak to her. Um, that is specifically talk to um, the environmental issues and supporting communities that are especially affected by uh, mining activities. Yes, I think in a nutshell, that's what we, we do. So you can imagine with all these um, um, climate change related challenges as well as COVID, and of course the um, ever changing uh, economic context. So we've been working a lot on um, strengthening the our community's ability to respond or to deal with shocks when they hit them. And beyond that, we've also been working with them to strengthen their uh, livelihood sources, to help, help them improve their agricultural production, help them improve their animal, smaller animal production, help them uh, with clean water. Uh, for example, we have uh, supported communities built weirs and we've dr drilled boreholes for them to access water. We've also, like I mentioned earlier, worked with our young people uh, so that we don't leave uh, anyone behind. Our young people, people living with disabilities, um, as well as their uh, children, um, to ensure that our, our interventions are always inclusive. Um, yes, uh, some of the items that we've been working on lately in terms of um, improving the voice of the communities is around um, environment. Uh, the environment that um, they, they that that they they they, they depend on, uh, especially uh, against the uh, corporates that come into mine, uh, to ensure that they get benefits out of those uh, that, that those extractive uh, uh, industries, to ensure that um, the even when they are part of the mining, they do that safely and ensure that if they, they have a voice around uh, whatever many activities, they have that uh, space to, to, to voice out their, their concerns. If, to Fadzwa, if you would like to, uh, to answer this one as well, what's the best part of your job working with Christian Aid in Zimbabwe? Uh, thank you so much, Charlotte. Um, the best part uh, for me working with Christian Aid in Zimbabwe has to do with um, working with different partners who are tackling uh, a number of issues which Thierry has already um, alluded to. And what makes it so unique is that um, it gives one an opportunity to be open-minded and be able to listen to what partners are encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. And also um, appreciating the working environment uh, which um, emphasizes around um, appreciating and um, acknowledging each person's uh, dignity um, as both men and women are equal before um, in, in the eyes of God. So that, that value system is also entrenched, not only in the work that I do, but also in the communities that I uh, meet with whenever I go um, in the field. And then lastly, um, because Christian Aid is a global um, movement, um, I get the, the joy of uh, listening um, to my colleagues in Latin America, Asia, um, in the UK, in Ireland, and also um, in other parts of Africa. Um, I get to enrich in my experience. I get to listen how uh, other country programs have managed to encounter similar contexts that we're encountering as well. So it, it, is a, it is a very good space for me. I uh, thank you, Charlotte, over to you. 
Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I wonder, um, I think we have uh, we have Joyce from our partner, Zella, on the call as well. So um, I wonder, uh, Tafadza, do you want to, to briefly introduce uh, Joyce and how you work together as the Christian Aid Programme and the partner? And then Joyce, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and your work uh, with Christian Aid. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. I would like to introduce you to Joyce Machira. She is a senior program officer uh, at the Zimbabwe Environmental Law Association, uh, in short, ZELA, which is a local organization that advocates for environmental rights across the country. Um, Joyce is passionate around issues of environmental justice and also amplifying the facilitating the amplification of the voices of the poor especially for communities that have been affected by mining um, in Zimbabwe of late. So with uh, through the work that we do as Christian Aid, we've been supporting Azela to ensure that um, they work with communities and they facilitate that space where um, the communities affected by mining can engage with the government and mining companies in order to come up with lasting solutions to the challenges that come by as a result of mining. Um, I wouldn't want to say much. I would like to invite Joyce herself to explain more about the work that she's doing. Uh, thank you, Charlotte, over to you. Oh, well, I think uh, over to Joyce. Joyce, if you're happy to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Tafazwa. Thank you, Charlotte. Hello again, everyone. Uh, as introduced, my name is Joyce Machiri with the Zimbabwe Environmental Law Association. I'm a mother of one. Uh, my daughter is one year, seven months old right now. And um, let me just talk briefly about uh, what Zela do. Zela uh, is a premium public interest environmental law organization which seeks to promote environmental justice, sustainable and equitable use of natural resources uh, democracy and good governance in the natural resources and environmental sector. Um, and the last work is mainly anchored on a core group of rights that are reflective of natural resources governance, namely the environmental, economic, social, and cultural rights, uh, which uh, mainly uh, referred to as the EESCRs. And to achieve um, its mission, Zela uses uh, various strategies, which include legal and policy advocacy, community-based natural resources, management approaches, investigative and evidence-based uh, research, litigation, community monitoring, uh, community training and capacity building, as well as conflict resolution. And our work spans um, over helping poor communities to assert and claim their environmental, economic, social, and cultural rights within the natural resources and environmental sector. And we also seek to ensure that environmental and natural resources management policies, uh, strategies, and legal frameworks uh, respond positively to the needs of marginalized women, uh, men, and youths living in urban and rural communities. And our work cuts across different environmental sectors, such as the mining, forest management, wildlife management, water management, and provision of adequate social and environmental services in urban areas that is safe and adequate drinking water, shelter, energy, waste management services, and uh, land for urban agriculture, among others. Fantastic, and such a broad uh, amount of work. I remember coming to your offices when we uh, visited Zimbabwe in 2017 and hearing all about the work and and being blown away by the breadth and the depth of, of everything that you're doing. Um, I wonder whether just to help us kind of get an idea of the, the sorts of change that you're able to get through this work, do you have um, a case study or a story of a particular community um, that you can share so we can kind of get that more personal picture as well as the, the fantastic overview that you've already given? Uh, thank you uh, for that. I think as uh, Tiri was speaking earlier on, he talked about uh, giving communities a voice. Uh, what we have managed, I mean, what we have managed to successfully do as an organization with support from Christian Aid uh, is mainly to 
uh, build capacity of communities to be able to understand their rights. And they've become project champions uh, and several community leaders now understand and articulate rights to food, life, education, clean water, health environment, right to education, right to benefit from diamonds, um, and other minerals being mined in Zimbabwe, and they now have the ability to investigate rights uh, and violations by community monitors. Uh, one case uh, that I can talk about is the case of the communities in Marange, where we have diamond mining. And uh, with this community, with support from Christian Aid, we have uh, mainly been uh, building capacity of these community monitors and mining communities. Uh, on their environmental rights. And we have uh, been mainly uh, implementing an uh, initiative which we title Independent uh, Environmental Impact Assessment, whereby um, we have trained communities to be able to independently monitor what we call environmental impact assessments that are done by mining companies before they start mining in, uh, in any community. So you find that um, the, there has been uh, some companies who have been mining before, but uh, of late, uh, some time in 20, um, about three years, four years back, uh, there has been a coming in of the new, uh, of, of Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Companies uh, taking over from various companies that have been mining before in Marange um, after a decision that uh, they, have, they, they haven't really been accountable to, to what uh, to their mining activities. So the communities now, with their knowledge that they had, actually the Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company started mining without an EIA. And communities engaged um, ZCDC, uh, that company that started mining on this, uh, about their EIA, which they failed to um, produce. And they actually had to engage with Emma and with the support of Zela, uh, I think earlier on I mentioned about the uh, in one of the uh, interventions that we do, which is litigation. We facilitated the, the court um, papers for, for this issue uh, for on behalf of the communities in Marange um, to stop mining. And actually, this was granted. And actually, the CDC had to stop mining without uh, infested to do their environmental impact assessment. So this is one achievement that I would really allude to, which we have done with the support from Christian Aid on issues to do with environmental rights and communities. Fantastic. And I think so much can be done by giving communities um, knowledge and skills to be able to uh, defend their own rights and hold these bigger companies and governments to account for the services they should be providing. So that sounds like a fantastic project and uh, community intervention. So thank you so much for talking about that. Um, I'm aware that um, time can be against us with all of these things and we could chat for such a long time. Um, but I just wonder if you have any thoughts on what we can be doing from the UK perspective, from the UK churches as, as part of um, Commitment for Life? What can we do from here to kind of support your work, to stand in solidarity with you and with the communities that you work with? Um, is there any message for us that, that you have that the communities would benefit from, uh, things that we can do here? Uh, thank you for that. Firstly, I think the role of the churches, especially with regards to the work that we are doing uh, with support from Christian aid right here in Zimbabwe, is very critical because you find that um, the Bible actually uh, made us to be stewards of um, the environment that we are mainly operating in, living in, and where these companies are coming to mind. So I think one thing that we really want is to uh, support from the churches to actually also rally in and support the programs that we are doing, uh, ensuring that uh, actually um, there is good governance and management of natural resources um, as it is stated and uh, as it was uh, planned and created by God to ensure that we have good stewardship of the environment. And that also, I think the, the resources that we have, they are a blessing. Um, it's unfortunate that they have become a case to a number of people and to a number of mining communities. But if only also we could pray that 
this case, the resource case issue, it, it could be um, dealt with or removed and we remain with the resource blessings that we were given uh, before uh, as it was created by God. So I think one issue is about the issue about prayer and prayer also goes on even, I think the Bible even talks about us uh, praying for our leaders. I think we need leadership that is really God fearing and leadership that will also support um, our, the, I mean, uh, that will also become good stewards of the environment and also ensuring that they implement policies and legal frameworks that will actually ensure good governance and management of natural resources. So one thing that I would really call for is prayer. And if possible as well, if we could have also campaigns coming from you guys, supporting the kind of work, it might be campaign the right to environment, uh, different campaigns that can be done uh, to actually uh, make sure that the work become effective and it also becomes um, uh, something that will really benefit uh, the communities and also the nation at large so that we do not lose out. So campaigns would do, prayer would do uh, on top of the support that you guys have really been giving us. I think for now, this is what I'll have to say. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, a, ch a challenge to all of us to keep campaigning and holding our government to account as much as you are doing with yours. Um, and I think there'll be lots of opportunities for us to do that on the, the global scale this year with a uh, climate uh, COP meeting in the UK and the G7 and just trying to take some of the things that you've been teaching your communities uh, to hold, hold their rights and make sure that we demand that stewardship that, that you talked about from our government as much as uh, you are doing with, with yours. Thank you so much, Joyce. Uh, and I just wonder, uh, Tiri and Tafadwa, do you have um, anything, any message to give back to uh, all those people on the call and our UK churches uh, from your perspective as part of the uh, Zimbabwe program as we finish? Okay, thanks, uh, Charlotte. I think uh, echoing uh, what Joyce has uh, already said, um, I think the first from, from us, um, the Zimbabwe team is, um, appreciation and lots of appreciation for the continued support that uh, you have provided to the uh, people of Zimbabwe over such a long time. Um, also expressed by your the continued uh, contact that you have with us, um, the teams that you have sent in the past to come and visit and meet with the communities, they, it may, really, really makes a huge difference when they get to see your faces. Um, and of course, I mean, there is always going to be a, a maybe need for resources and more resources. But um, I think the contribution that we've made so far makes a, a, a huge difference and we wish you could keep it up. And of course, in addition to the material resources, um, your voices as well, like Joyce has uh, mentioned, um, as much as you possibly can, supporting campaigns that um, you're part of. Uh, campaigns that happen in your neighborhoods, uh, just so that you remain in solidarity with uh, uh, communities that are really struggling to make their uh, livelihoods firm down in Zimbabwe. Um, thank you so much, Tiri. Um, I think for me, Charlotte, uh, my colleagues have already alluded to um, the recommendations, but uh, personally, um, I would like to really thank the supporters for their sacrifice, for their commitment in carrying out this task. It's not easy. And I can imagine within the COVID-19 context, um, you know, life may be difficult. It makes it even, ask, one can ask your, uh, yourself whether is this still worth it? Is, is there God at the end of the day? But I think uh, from our end, we, we really appreciate the effort um, and all the service and all the uh, drive in ensuring that um, the marginalized communities in areas where Joyce's organization work can be able to live a life of dignity. And especially at a time when um, COVID-19 has actually is actually worsened the economic um, situation in Zimbabwe, where children, people with disabilities are found at the end are the ones that are have to bear the, the negative impacts of, um, of COVID-19 as well. So we, we, sin we sincerely hope that um, when COVID-19 context, when the environment allows for church solidarity 
across um, borders. It would also be an honor to, to see some of the supporters come to Zimbabwe and witness uh, the good work um, that you are doing and the transformation that is taking place at the local level. And we continually, um, we are so grateful and we hope that we'll keep in touch and you'll always be in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you and uh, thank you all of you, Tiri, Tafato and Joyce for, for joining us. And uh, I just want to say we're so grateful for everything that you do. I, I don't think the gratitude ever goes one way. We're, we are so indebted to everything that you do um, to, to make those changes and to, to give communities those voices and those chances to change things. So thank you so much for all of your hard work and for joining us to talk about it today.